rejoice. Uh, when they encountered this wonderful new philosophical um, literary uh, critical idea about openness. And that's exactly it. It's, it's um, postmodernist in the sense it's non-binary and um, it makes Joyce a postmodernist in a way. Maybe we're today after all of these things and <laughs> don't need to find these strict categories any longer. But openness is certainly in these works and all the more in their display because when I put them together I hope that the viewer will take this idea about Joyce from one work and that idea about his works uh, from the other artworks and that exactly this openness gets represented better than if you read one um, position in literary criticism Um, well, first of all, thank you. Thank you for your talk. Um, you talked about engagement, and I mean, this is a practical question I have in relation to engagement to your exhibition here in Seoul. And yeah. is there a conscious decision on your part to, when it goes through all these different places, to to pick pieces that might appeal to an Asian audience or a Russian audience, or is it to say and what, what gets left behind and what's taken? What, what kind of process is behind that? Well, it's a um, curatorial process, of course, in, in a way I, I thought about. Um, was there anything that I knew about that, uh, related to Korea in particular? Not knowing the Korean art scene uh, at all, really. And the, there are two ways in which I could incorporate that in this exhibition. Um, there was a sort of a blue image with a, a, an orange um, center that I didn't talk about. Um, that's still from a, an artwork um, by a Zagreb um, artist, Ivan Davislav Galeta, and it shows uh, a water polo game that he filmed in such a way that he stayed with the center of the camera on the ball all the time. And it reacts to the episode in Ulysses that has Two lessons, indeed, two lessons as its sort of theme: a firework um, and full of O's. O, 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 O. Um, yeah. And it's filling in for it as well, the start of the Olivia episode. But that's um, a direct reference by this filmmaker. And the water polo game he picked was Korea against some other nation. So it was a, a lovely coincidence that I could put in. And then the other very practical one that I stumbled upon and didn't choose was that the um, Afro thinker by an artist whose name I can't pronounce um, had to be left in that space downstairs in the, the gallery. Yeah. So it was installed permanently and I asked him it's a odd thing to do, can you please remove it? And um, when I came I, I found that it was rather interesting actually because it um, matched the colouring of that particular film and also the thinker Baudin's um, sculpture is what Joyce himself modelled his uh, Man Ray portrait photograph on. So Man Ray photographed Joyce in this sort of thinking mm. pose. So I had a link to another work there and I established it even more clearly by um, well, when I had the, the large um, badge um, slip it to me, orange and blue again, in the, the Dublin exhibition, I brought a postcard of it. And just in case I could use it, so I stuck it on the, the chest of the Afro right. thinker, um, usurping that sculpture in a way, um, the way in which Joyce used his own art, stole from everybody else. Right. <laughs> and, how he used texts and sources and so on. Might tell you a little bit of how <laughs> he kind of stole yeah. another artist's work and into this thing. Yeah. Yeah. Please go ahead. Okay. Well, uh, I see uh, important artists uh, did some work uh, and uh, they did uh, portraits. And meaning that, uh, which means that uh, 
Uh, well, uh, what I want to know is, uh, is there any, any important artist who, uh, who uh, was truly inspired by uh, Joyce and Joyce's works and uh, did works voluntarily, not asked for, asked to while, do something? Uh, while, um, I voluntarily. Oh, voluntarily. voluntarily, yes. Yeah. Uh, um, totally inspired. Um, I wouldn't say because um, everybody brings their own um, background, their own knowledge, their preferences to this, um, and that would be not so interesting if somebody you know wanted to be a, a copyist of Joyce. Um, Joyce makes us think ourselves in mm -hmm. some ways. So it's much more interesting when we are activated to do, um, to use his tools in a way, the toolbox of Joyce to do our own things. So I don't particularly like it when um, people just draw these two little circles for the glasses and you know make portraits of Joyce that only really jump on the bandwagon of the, the tribute industry and, and end up on the mugs and t-shirts and so on. The more substantial engagements I find more interesting and I hope to have shown that. And yeah, many of them are conceptual artists, right? Many, but certainly not all. And that's where my interests lie in the main. That's where that generation, um, the first generation which had choices in, uh, um, entire work at their disposal, John Cage and um, Boyce and um, Richard Hamilton and um, those kinds of people, Brian Doherty and Brian Rabinovich, and, um, they're all in the, on this main wall there in, 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 uh, National, uh, in the Museum of Art here in the National University. That is, is where I, I find um, but maybe that generation owns him almost more than others do, but certainly there is a great variety of responses. Um, yeah. Just one more question, then we we'll go upstairs. And we'll go upstairs. All right. All right. You know, when you think about image and uh, literature and so on, you, you look at uh, people kind of stick out and jump out, and it's like Oscar Wilde. He was so uh, self-possessed how he looked, how he dressed, how he presented himself, and he was so flamboyant. And yet, if you think about it, I mean, Joyce is really not too far different. I mean, even looking at the back of the photograph, you say, that's Joyce. I don't think you could do that with Oscar Wilde quite as readily. But, you know, still, with the, but in front of him, he projects such a strong image. I was wondering that when you do a uh, exhibition of uh, visual art pertaining to Joyce, almost invariably it goes to images of Joyce himself to the point that I wondered if his uh, self-image, projected self-image, often uh, intensely or even unintentionally gets in the way with what he was trying to project as an artist. Mm -hmm. And if that has been a real handicap from artists trying to get into Joyce because there's this a strong dynamic visual image of the artist physically himself. But Joyce certainly cultivated an image of himself, a kind of a fashion almost that Beckett um, mm -hmm. uh, modeled himself on yeah. Joyce's um, yeah. coat or whatever and when he was young. But it's, it um, goes much more for Joyce's own aesthetic tastes. He had very um, bourgeois, um, kind of traditional middle class tastes in both furniture and music and so on. And for some people it takes a little bit of thinking, oh yes, uh, visual artists don't need to have the same taste if they read Joyce and it's the works they're reacting to rather than the man and so on. Mm -hmm. so, um, artists can certainly see and are independent. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'd like to, first of all, thank you very much for your, for, for your talk. Thank you.